Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. I am going to wait for a few minutes as people are signing in. Um, so take a deep breath, enjoy your seat <laughs> as best you can, and we'll get started in a few minutes. This is the BCom discovery session called BCom Students Spill the Tea. And uh, it's gonna be an interactive session. Um, uh, and you're gonna basically be hearing from our wonderful and amazing BCom students who are in their second and fourth year, et cetera, all over the spectrum. So we will begin in a few minutes while people are logging in. Thanks for being here. Awesome. Well, it looks like um, our people logging in have slowed down a little bit. So I'm going to just do a little brief welcome for you. Um, and I will be admitting people as they come. So uh, you might see others join us. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I wish it could have been in person. Um, unfortunately, it can't be. So I'm hoping the next best thing is a a Zoom screen full of our current students to give you a, a true <laughs> depiction of what it's like uh, to be a Bachelor of Commerce student with the Haskane School of Business. Um, just a few things to note. Um, if you don't mind staying muted just while we are making our presentation, that helps us um, so that um, people's sound isn't interrupted. But if you're comfortable to do so, we love to see your beautiful faces. So if you'd like to turn on your video, you're more than welcome. Um, we will be having a, a Q&A session at the end. I'm very hopeful um, that you'll have lots of questions for BCom students. It doesn't have to be specifically related to, um, to business if you would like to know generally what it's like to be a U Calgary student, um, but they are the experts in being a business student and they're here to answer all your burning questions today. Um, if there is a question that we were unable to answer, you didn't understand or you'd like to follow up, um, there's going to be myself uh, in the chat and my delightful team lead is also here as well. We are happy to answer program questions for you. Um, our associate dean, Sherry Weaver, is also here today. Sherry, I don't know if you mind um, un unhiding your video and just giving a wave here. This is Sherry. Um, so there's lots of us available to answer your questions. Um, but my hope and dreams for this session was mostly that you would be hearing from our actual BCom students. Oops. I wanted to let you know the session is being recorded, as I said, so um, you can check back here. I believe it will be posted on the Open House website for up to a month. Um, so feel free to share it with your family and your friends. Um, uh, just an FYI that you might be on camera. I would like to take the time to acknowledge the traditional territories of the people of the Treaty 7 region in Southern Alberta, which includes the Blackfoot Confederacy comprising this, oh, here, sorry, let's try that again. Boom, there we go. Which includes <laughs> the Blackfoot Confederacy comprising the Sitka, Gani, and Kainai First Nations, as well as the Sitsina First Nation and the Stoney Nakoda, including the Chickenee, Bearspaw, and Wesley First Nations. The city of Calgary is also home to Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3. Alrighty, uh, I'm very glad that we have uh, welcomed you here today. I'm just trying to get my PowerPoint to stop acting up. There we go. I got it. <laughs> um, I'm just going to uh, make Rasha the co-host and I'm gonna make some other people the co-host of the meeting because my internet seems to be being a little funny. So just in case um, something goes wrong, we'll have a backup uh, there. Okay, so hopefully that's great and everyone is doing okay. Um, uh, welcome, as I said, to, uh, to our Become Students Spill the Tea. Um, introductory session to uh, the students at our BCom program. 
uh, what we're going to do is do a few introductory polls just to get to know you and who you are. Um, so we know kind of what audience they're talking to. And then we're going to meet each one of our BCom students. Um, they're gonna just give us a brief introduction to who they are and what they've done here in the faculty. And they're going to answer each of them the question, what has been the best aspect of your BCom program and what has been the most challenging? So you'll get to hear that from each one of them. Uh, and then after that, we're going to move to our live Q&A uh, where you can ask specific questions um, to each student. So let's begin with polls. Okay, here we go. Here's poll number one. Just wanna make sure you can actually see and hear the presentation. <laughs> if you don't mind answering, that would be great. I'm going to give that a few seconds. Awesome. Looks like most of the people here have answered. So good. Uh, oh, excellent. We have someone who prefers to remain mysterious, and I applaud that to that person, but happy to hear that most. Uh, and most everybody can see and hear us, so that's great. Um, those are the results from that poll. Awesome. So on to intro to question two, which is, what grade are you in? Great. We've got lots of grade 12 students here. We have some support people and some grade 11 students. That's great. Thank you so much for being here. Awesome. Okay. So I'm gonna just briefly share those results so everybody can see who we're dealing with. Welcome and thank you for coming. And our very last poll question, which is, where are you joining us from? One of the awesome benefits of doing open house uh, over Zoom was we got to uh, be joined today by some international students, which is just a great delight. It's much harder to fly to campus for open house. So um, that is one of the cool benefits of being virtual. All right, so here we go. Uh, almost everybody today joining us from Calgary, although we do have a few international students. Uh, so thank you for being here. That's really wonderful news. Okay, that's our polls. And so now it is time to meet our students. So let me pull up the next slide here. Jessica, if you would please give us a little introduction. Okay, thanks Rochelle. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm super excited to be here. My name is Jessica. I go by she, her pronouns. So I'm a fourth year student studying business and global development. I'm also doing embedded certificates in honor entrepreneurial thinking and sustainability studies. As well, on top of all of that, I'm also in the cooperative education program, which I'm sure we're, we'll explain a little bit more um, throughout this, this uh, open house as well. But to answer this exciting question in terms of what I think is the best and most challenges, challenging aspects of my BCom experience, I kind of have to cheat a little bit and say that I think the most challenging aspects of my experience have also been the best and most rewarding already. And so it's a little bit weird to say that this is my most challenging um, aspect of my program, but it's just how many opportunities there are out there. There's obviously, you can see I'm doing combined degree, two certificates, there's cooperative education program. There's also study abroad, lots of clubs and different things to get involved in. And so that um, being involved in so many different things has definitely been um, challenging in both the time management aspect and trying to fit everything together, but also the most rewarding for me so far. Awesome. It is a cheating answer, but I will accept it because it's so good. Thank you so much, Jessica. It was great to hear from you. Uh, up next, we have Maeve. Maeve, if you will please introduce yourself. Yes, thank you very much. So as the slide says, I'm Maeve Wilson. I am a second year um, BCom student with a major in accounting. I'm actually from British Columbia, just over the Alberta border. So this is my first year in the city and actually being on campus which has been really fun so far. In regards to the question, I would say the best experience of my BCom so far 
has been taking advantage of some of the resources that the school offers, which is something I didn't do in my first year and I kind of regret. Uh, specifically, the Career Advising Center has been really great. Kind of like what Jessica said, there's so many different opportunities here that you're presented with, which can be a bit overwhelming. Um, being able to talk to someone, set some goals and uh, figure out what's the best path for me has been a really good experience and will help me make the most out of my four years, which goes by quite fast. And I would say the most challenging has been the initial transition from high school to post-secondary in first year. But with time and patience, um, you kind of click and you figure out what's the best system for you for studying and getting your work done. And now I really enjoy it. So thank you. I look forward to your questions. Thank you, Maeve. Great. All right. Next slide, please, computer. There we go. Zainab, if you could please introduce yourself. Hey, everyone. I'm Zainab. I'm in my fourth year accounting um, here at the Haskins School of Business. And the best part for me is just working with others and actually like learning new skills in teams. A really good thing about Haskin is we work in teams a lot and you really get to meet new people, develop skills. I'm a really introvert person and I'm always like to myself. So Haskin has really helped me develop skills that like working in teams, working with others, being open. And I think the hardest part for me, I think I would be, would be the same as Maeve, um, transitioning from high school to university. It's just that you feel like you're alone, but then I realized something is like, everyone's on the same page as you, no one's alone. And you can talk to anyone, they'll feel the same. So like one thing I learned is just like, just talk to someone. Like it could be someone next to you in class or like your professor or an advisor, anyone to help you. And everyone's here to help. So thank you. Thank you, that was great. All right. Next, we're going to hear from our friend, Michael, if the slide will ever show up. Hold on, come on slide. Got it, okay, there we go. Please, Michael, go ahead. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for being here. My name is Michael Grum. I'm a second year Bachelor of Commerce student and my concentration is in finance. Uh, I do a few other things around campus. I'm involved with the uh, Commerce Undergraduate Society. I work for the Students' Union. So uh, yeah, I have a lot of great things going on here at Haskane. Uh, to answer the question, I think um, the best experience of my degree so far has kind of been the last month. Just being able to be back in person and actually experience how vibrant the community at Haskane here really is. You know, everybody being so nice, so welcoming, being involved in really dynamic lectures. That has been by far the most amazing experience of the past two years. Um, the most challenging experience, kind of uh, piggybacking off of what the people before me said, has been uh, being decisive. There are so many opportunities available here, so many things which I am certain would be amazing to be a part of, but it's kind of you know choosing, uh, being, main, main, being restrained by your schedule and saying, I can only do two or three things has been really, di really difficult. And I've had a, a few difficult decisions to make over the past few years, but uh, all in all, it's worked out great. So I'm really excited to hear from all of you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Michael. Yes, I always say you will not be bored. <laughs> That's for one thing, for sure. Awesome. Okay, so Vivian, be your next. If you don't mind introducing yourself, please. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Vivian. I'm a third year accounting student. I'm involved in the Vietnamese Student Association, and I'm also a mentor at for the International Student Mentorship Program. So I could say I try to do a lot around campus. So with regards to the question, I think the best experience for me is just going on campus and meeting like all the new people and meeting new friends because there's so many people that come and then you might not know anyone and it's everyone's like in the same boat. So everyone's really nice and very accepting. So it's the best experience is like meeting new people and friends. And the most challenging aspect of VCOM, I feel like, is sometimes having to deal with hard situations in group work because obviously group works sometimes go well, sometimes don't go well, and then you have to sort out all the problems that might be involved in, in it. So it's a, also a good experience to work in a group, but sometimes there's problems and it's like kind of hard to work through it. But yeah, those are my experience at UFC. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Okay, our next student is Simran. I'm just trying to get your 
slide. There we go. All right, um, please introduce yourself. Hi everyone, I'm so excited to be here. Uh, I'm Simran Badwan, I'm a third year student and I'm in business general. Um, and I think uh, to answer that questions, all of my fellow peers have touched on basically everything almost. Uh, but yeah, I would like to add that the best experience that I've had is to meet people. Uh, you know, you build really strong friendships here. Go talk to people, go talk to your professors, spend time on campus. There's a lot of fun uh, events that happen, a lot of fun coffee chats. If you just wanna go talk to people, it's nothing too scary. It's just go have a conversation, have fun, meet some new people. Um, so getting involved outside of class has been really, really helpful and really exciting and fun. Um, and the most challenging part for me, I think a lot of people have already touched on that is time management. You have so many things that you know you can do and that would look great on your resume and it would just really help you grow as an individual but uh you know picking and choosing what's best for you and a lot of people are available on campus to help you with that like our advisors um and prioritize your prioritize the things you want to do and other than that i think we are so happy to have you here it's a great community and uh we love it here that's so great. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, did I miss anybody? I don't think so. That all my wonderful students, I think we're all accounted for and everyone introduced themselves. That's great. So we're going to move on to the second part of uh, the presentation, which is really where we're hoping to hear from you to have your questions asked. I would like to encourage you. I know it's intimidating to um, raise your hand or unmute or or on video, whatever you'd like, but um, we like to start early with our students. Um, you know, if you feel like you can be a little brave um, and ask your questions, you can either choose to raise your hand, which is through a reaction, reaction in Zoom, uh, or feel free to unmute or ask. Um, so that's this portion. I'm gonna actually stop sharing my screen so we can just see you better. But um, any questions uh, you have, uh, that you would like to follow up directly with someone from the program. Just as a reminder, we are here until two at the Open House um, BCom booth, or you can email us at undergraduate at haskane.ucalgary.ca. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. And I'm going to uh, just open it up to the floor uh, for your questions. Anybody, anybody? There's no immediate questions. Maybe I'll get us rolling with one, uh, which is if you guys could talk about your participation in the various clubs we have on campus. Uh, I would love to hear more about why you joined a student club and um, what you feel got out of it. So just anybody can jump in at any time. I, I can start. Um, so I'm involved in uh, two clubs here on, uh, in Haskane. The first one is the Commerce Undergraduate Society. And uh, the reason why I'm involved with the Commerce Undergraduate Society, and I think this is kind of your question, Brianna, with uh, the business club. This is one of the business clubs. But um, I, in high school, I was involved in a little bit of student leadership, and I'm really passionate about student leadership. I think when students have a chance to actually make a difference in the community that they're involved in, the community becomes a much better place to be in. So um, with that knowledge in mind, I joined the Commerce Undergraduate Society because it looked like a club which would uh, not advocate for students per se, but you know, take students' interests to heart and provide events and other opportunities for students. The other one that I'm involved in is called the Haskin Report, and it's a uh, biannual research uh, publication where students can basically submit any sort of business related research paper that they feel is interesting. And uh, we will help you through the editing process. And we have a, a publication that we release twice a year. So that was also something that I was interested in. I love reading, I love writing. So those were two clubs which spoke to me and I joined. Mind if I go next? <laughs> All right. I guess I'll go. <laughs> so um, just a little bit about your question, Brianna. There are tons of different clubs here at the university. I personally didn't join any clubs my first year. I decided to focus on my studies, which I felt was 
the best decision for me at the time. I don't really regret it. But one thing you can do even in your first year, the Students' Union has a Club Hub page and it lists all the clubs at the university. There are hundreds. And don't feel limited to just business clubs. Feel free to branch out and explore different faculties because any kind of club has great transferable skills that'll look good on resumes or whatever you do in the future. So uh, I'd recommend looking at that page. You can filter it out and get in touch. Follow them on social media. Um, you have subscription email lists. And a lot of the times these clubs have networking events. Um, if you feel confident enough in your first year, definitely get your name out there and see if that's the right club environment for you. So there's lots of options. Awesome. Anybody else want to say anything else about clubs before we move on to our next question? Um, I'll say something. So basically I was in the same boat as Maeve. So in my first year, I joined like maybe like one or two clubs, but I wasn't really ready to join like a lot of clubs. But I feel like with the pandemic and everything closing down and everything's virtual, I feel like if you like feel like you're ready, you should join at least maybe one or two because it's okay if you're, you're uncomfortable, but maybe it's best if you can step out of your, your comfort zone because you'll never know what opportunities there are. So if you're like ready, maybe like try to join like one or two in your first year, but if not, if there's always your second, third, like fourth year. So yeah, don't feel too pressured to join a club. I think that's great advice. And just so everyone here knows, we actually have a staff member uh, she's the student engagement advisor and her whole job is to support student clubs. So it's something that we believe in really strongly uh, as a very, really, really valuable um, part of your BCom experience. Okay, we have some, some questions rolling in, which really is exciting for me. A uh, question here from Louise, which is what are some tips that you would give uh, when it comes to transitioning from high school classes to university lectures? Anybody can start. That's a really good question. Um, I would say for me, it's taking advantage of the slow periods in your schedule. Uh, I have a lot of friends who take it like, uh, it's vacation time. <laughs> There's no like, like big test this week, I can take it off, but that's a really great time to get ahead on your readings, prepare in advance. So utilizing that time in addition to uh, the in lecture time that you have. I hope that helps a little bit. <laughs> I'll pass it on to someone else. Yeah, um, I can add to that. Um, so most of the time professors post the lectures before your actual lecture. So they'll post the PowerPoint slides on D12 like in advance. So just going through those before you attend the lecture is also helpful. So you already have an idea of what they're gonna talk about. So you can focus more on what the professor is saying rather than looking at the slides. I think that's one strategy that worked well for me. So it, feel free to give that a try as well. I could add on to that, yeah. I think the biggest difference between high school classes and union lectures is the, um, especially first year, is the size of the classes. So like in high school, you have like 30 kids and then in university, you go to 300 kids. And it's like really um, scary to look at it, but it's just simple. It's just um, the professor talks, if you have any questions, Everybody probably has the same question. You just raise your hand. Don't be scared to ask a question. And if you need help or if you're too scared, you could always like email the professor after class, like talk to them after class, ask one of your peers sitting next to you. And it's just, it's the same thing, but it's just bigger, like three times bigger. I can, I can add one more thing before we uh, move on. Um, I think the biggest paradigm shift that I had to make when I was, trans uh, when I was transitioning from high school to university was, um, in university, you're no longer learning to just like advance to the next grade, especially when you're a business student, you're learning to become a competent professional. So what comes with that is you have to learn to understand rather than learn to actually just like pass a test or pass an exam. So that kind of thought process from a student really helps because at that point, you're no longer cramming like two days before an exam because you're learning as you go along and you're saying, oh, this is interesting. And you follow up more on your studies. So I think kind of having that mindset before you go in will be extremely helpful. I guess if I could end this off, I think one of the biggest things between university classes and uni lectures is that 
um, the studying is a lot more independent. And the thing is, you're not going to find a perfect way right away. You need to experiment with different strategies. And, you know, you, there are a lot of supports and opportunities out there. But don't feel discouraged if the first strategy you try doesn't exactly work. I think it takes, I think what I see even with a lot of upper year students as well now in my fourth year is that a lot of people kind of give up or like try to try try to continue studying in ways that don't necessarily work for them or at least work best for them. And so you need to really experiment. Take in mind, like throughout university, you're going to learn more and more about yourself. And as you develop other skills, you find out, you know, what works best for you. And so, for example, for me, I'm someone who, I hate to say this, but I procrastinate a lot. It's just reality with most students that that happens. And so I find a lot of ways to kind of force myself to do things by that could be like giving myself like fake deadlines to get things done earlier and myself, um, especially when, you know, living back through like my days in first year and second year, where I was submitting assignments like one minute before the deadline. Um, I think for myself, I'm someone who really keeps myself accountable by having other people like involved. And so when I had an essay I was due um, in a week, I would schedule times with the TAs to meet with them like three days in advance or something to meet with them to go over my things. And that kind of pushed me to actually have something done or written um, by the time I meet with them three days in advance. And so I'm not doing these things like maybe if a, a day before the deadline. So definitely you have to experiment with different strategies and tips and you're not going to find it perfectly the right way, but keep, keep on going. You'll find, find one. That's a great answer. Thank you. Um, so we've had some questions about concentrations and I'm, I'm going to kind of just squash them into one. Well, I'm going to bring up some things I'd like you to talk about. Uh, so I think how did you decide what concentration you wanted to do if you did? Um, and I would love to hear if someone has changed concentrations, why you did that, uh, and, and just what your experience generally has been like with concentrating in a specific uh, subject area. Um, I can speak to that first, because uh, I feel like I have some experience with it. Um, so I entered university as a business general student because I was unsure of what concentration I wanted. And I personally didn't know what the difference between a finance major and an accounting major and a marketing major. And there were a lot of majors I didn't even know existed within the business domain. Um, so what I did was I kept it general. And then um, so you take a lot of introductory classes. So um, in your become journey, you'll end up taking at least one accounting class, at least one finance, at least one marketing. So you kind of get a taste of everything. Um, and that's what I did. So I'm in my third year now. I've almost taken every single, you know, business concentration class. Like I've taken one marketing, one business technology class. And uh, now I finally found it something that I really like. Um, and it's actually risk management insurance and finance. Trust me, until second year, I didn't even know this existed. I had no idea this was a concentration that is available to me. Um, it just happened that one of my friends was like, hey, you should try this class. You know, it's really great. Um, so I took that as like a business option class. Um, I ended up loving it. It was a great, great class, great opportunities. And right now I'm currently in the process of switching from business general to a risk management insurance and finance concentration. So if you're unsure, you, have, you don't have to choose your concentration right away. I chose mine in third year. Um, so take your time, take all of these classes, talk to people. You know, if you, if you hear someone who's doing accounting, ask them like, why did you choose accounting? What do you like about it? What do you not like about it? So don't stress about it too much. You can take some time. You can even decide in fourth year if that's what you need and that's how much time you need. Um, so don't you don't have to jump into it right away. And that would be like my advice, take your time. Um, I think I can build off what Simran said. So I went into university as a become general student because I wasn't really too sure of like what I wanted to do. So I had like some things in mind like, accounting, finance, and then 
I realized that you take like those intro basic courses, usually either in your first year, your second year, or even your third year. But if you have like certain ones you might be interested in, I would definitely recommend you take them, try to take them in maybe second year, because then it'll give you a good understanding of like, oh, what this major might like concentration might consist of. And you'll definitely see if you like, like what you're learning or if you don't like what you're learning so it gives you the opportunity to try like different things and if you're unsure you can always try to take the other basic classes and then figure out from there as well like a lot of people like do major when they come into university and you'll meet like a lot of people so you could always ask them like oh why did you take this major like what do you like don't like pros cons like all that so like don't feel pressure to have to concentrate because even if your degree takes, I don't know, four or five years, it's not like a huge deal. You don't have to graduate in four years. So that's my advice. If I could add on, I've actually changed my major twice, maybe three times. I can't quite remember <laughs> at this point. I actually started you know, um, at U of C as a fast um, finance and urban studies student. And so, um, and as you can see, I've added on a lot, a whole bunch of certificates as well now. Um, but I would actually say a really good indicator is you, yeah, you 100%, I agree with what um, Vivian and Simran said, like you really don't really need to choose your major until probably third year and second year is probably going to be the time where you kind of get an idea of what you kind of like. Um, something that really helped me in my factor is getting internship experience. Um, I think, you know, being able to actually work like a job in like the concentration or area you want to work in is definitely a huge indicator of whether you'll probably enjoy it as a career afterwards. And so like for myself, I I've done like my two, two of my three co-ops um, at slash internships now. And so I'm definitely um, I definitely like being a jack of all trades or going to wearing multiple hats and working with multiple different teams. And so that was one of the big reasons why I really liked going to general general business. Um, also huge. Um, thing factoring in my decision was just when I was trying to figure out which concentration to change into. Um, I just looked at all the courses that are offered in them. So you can easily just like Google U Calgary accounting and you can see the list of all the different courses. Um, same with any other concentration. There's like a brief description on each of them. Um, so you can read up those and then you find out like, okay, which ones do I like? Which one do I not? Um, I wouldn't say the intro courses are 100% like the best indicator to kind of tell whether you like a concentration or not. Um, for example, I actually really didn't enjoy um, NT317, which was an intro course to entre entrepreneurship. And now I'm in the certificate and actually having now um, experience working at startups and like after taking the course and like Although during my time I did enjoy it, I'm finding so much more value after I took it, like um, and appreciate it a lot more afterwards. So definitely work experience is a really um, in the field is a really great indicator, and also just looking if you actually like the courses that are offered in the concentration as well. I can add a one tidbit of value here. Um, I think uh, Simran, Vivian, and Jessica have done a really great job, but. Um, I'm a little bit of a kindred spirit to all of you have asked this question because I, I asked my prof this question about last week. So um, I'll just uh, give you a few, uh, a few things that he told me. So um, right now by name, I'm a finance major, but I have never taken a finance course before. So um, I'm not actually certain that I'll be staying in finance. We'll, we'll see how I like it. But um, the important thing to remember about majors, according to my prof, Dr. Cohen of uh, organizational behavior, is that um, the difference between majors is only four electives. So in terms of competency, like uh, the difference between, and your concentration actually doesn't even go on your degree parchment. So although it's an important thing for you, if you want to, you know, be a certain professional after you graduate, um, it's not something that you should really be too stressed about now. I think uh, do whatever you need to do in university, take all the courses that you're interested in, and then decide. I could just add on to that. Um, I was actually not a Haskins School of Business student first year. I was actually in economics and I switched into my second year. So for me, I think I took, because econ and um, Haskins and all students, they all take like econ, statistics, all these majors, I mean, classes. And for me, I think it was just talking to people next to me and just wondering, it was like, do I really want to be in econ or I think I like accounting better. And then I took my first accounting class, like the 217 introductory which everyone had to take. And I was like, oh, I really like this major. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna take this. But it's like, again, you just take every class, like marketing, finance, OBHR, and then you can decide for yourself. And you can always switch.
Thanks, everybody. What a great discussion about concentrations. Yeah, uh, concentration is only 18 units out of 120 units that you do uh, for the, the Bachelor of Commerce. And as uh, Michael indicated, it isn't on your parchment. Um, so, you know, we do want you to study a specific area you have in depth, um, which is why there is a concentration, but it will not limit you. Uh, when you're actually um, going on to working in, in your career. Um, uh, so it is a, a small part, uh, but an important part of the degree. And as you've seen, there's lots of flexibility um, with when you decide and if you decide and, um, and what you do. Okay, I, I have uh, received a few questions about the co-op program. Um, we are kind of nearing our time. Um, so I'm hoping we can stay a little bit later. If anyone um, is has to leave, please go ahead. But we'll try to fit in our last two questions. So in terms of co-op, um, just ha have some questions here uh, about your co-op experience. Would you recommend it? Uh, and is there anything you would do now to kind of prepare yourself for co-op? So please take it away. I'm not sure if the only co-op student out of us, um, but um, basically cooperative education, just to explain it, is basically integrating work experience and um, with your degree program. And so with the co-op cooperative program, you're required to do three internships, also known as co-op work terms. And one, at least one of them needs to be during the winter or fall semester. So you'll likely have to take um, be required to take an extra semester of your degree there. So um, for myself, I've done two co-ops so far. So I did my first um, at Neo Financial, my second at um, one of its sister companies, um, Harvest Builders. And so my experience with the co-op program, that's really, really great because I joined um, and had to seek out my first co-op at a very challenging time. And that was in the middle of the pandemic. Um, I think the co-op program, the greatest thing about that is just how many different co-op coordinators and the support that they can have. I'm pretty sure during my second year, I remember meeting with my co-op coordinator, Tanya. Um, she greatly helped me with um, reviewing my resume and so on. Haskins School of Business has this thing called VMOC that they use to um, help check with resumes and make sure um, it's a really great starting point um, for like as a first or second year to kind of use that. Um, kind of going into a little bit more of my job search experience at that point in time, because it was like the summer slash um, winter of 2020, uh, I was having quite a hard time because of the fact I was getting more emails that a lot of companies are just canceling hiring for pos positions and actually um, getting rejection emails of like not just making it to the interview or like getting the position itself. And so that was a really challenging time. But again, um, the greatest thing about the co-op um, one of the greatest things, not the greatest, I'd have to say, um, is the access to the co-op job board. And so those are exclusive um, job opportunities for those in the co-op program. Um, and there's definitely a lot more opportunities on there if you're seeking an internship during the fall or winter semester than there would be normally open to a lot of um, different um, students who were not part of the co-op program. That's because um, a lot of companies, if they offer a co-op position to students and they get um, extra funding from the government or institution and so on. So that's there's quite a lot of benefits being a co-op program. And regardless of, um, of that, I definitely think every student should um, try to get at least some internship experience before they graduate. One, because like, again, it's probably the best way to actually experience whether you um, want to pursue the career that you want to um, pursue because it's fact like you last thing you want to do is like graduate and get a job and discover that you don't like it although it's not too late to kind of um, switch around some things then as well but definitely it's really valuable to get work experience in general so that's a little bit um, what I, I'd have to say there and what would you suggest um, I think the other part of the question was what you can prepare to do that um, again, clubs. Clubs are a great thing to um, put in your resume to help you find a co-op and an internship. I didn't mention this earlier, but I'm the president of one of the Haskell Student Clubs, the University of Calgary Consulting Association, and have been on the executive teams of, I think, six of the Haskell Student Clubs. Um, so there are definitely ways to like um, stack up your resume with those club experiences. I'd like to add on to what Jessica said as well. Work experience, any work experience is great work experience. I haven't done the co-op program myself. It's something I'm very interested in. Back in high school, I did a work experience program 
And that's how I got hired at a bookkeeping firm. And that's what I did during my gap year. So you will make connections at any position that you go through, even if you work someplace and it may not be the right fit for you. You might meet people through other people and get a job in the future. Ways you can prepare in advance. They do have information sessions for the co-op. I believe this is usually a program you do in your second or third year. I think that's usually around the time people do it. But if you wanna get a head start, meet with the Career Advising Center. They're wonderful. And you can also start working on your resume in advance. And yeah, just preparing, gaining some of those experiences like Jessica said to uh, build up the resume. But once again, don't put too much pressure on yourself and uh, try to have some fun while you go through the experience. Thank you. I, I could just add one more thing because uh, I'm actually getting prepared to apply for co-op in the next few weeks here. So, uh, you know, maybe, maybe I might have some value. Um, first, but before I actually say anything, thank you so much, Jessica. That was such a detailed answer. And it was actually really helpful for me as well uh, as, I'm, uh, as I'm about to start applying. But um, the, the one thing that I would add to what Jessica said is just don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, you see advisors, ask them questions. Older students, ask them questions. People who are actually in the field that you want to uh, do your work term and ask them questions. Um, I think the best thing you can do to prepare and the thing that's making me feel somewhat prepared right now is I feel like I have a pretty good idea of what this application process is going to look like and how the co-op work term will actually work with my degree and affect my degree. So that's in, in life in general, just ask as many questions as possible. Thank you. Yes, please, please ask us questions. We love talking to our students. It's our favorite thing in the day. Um, and please don't ever hesitate to do that. I did put in the chat the co-op website. It's recently been revamped. Um, I, I hope you all love it because I had a big part in designing it. Um, there's a video there that talks about like, to one of our co-op students that tells about her experience. Uh, and then there's lots of lots of information on the website now. So um, it's a great thing to check out if you are interested in co-op. Thank you, Michael. I agree. It's a great website. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Um, okay, so um, I do want to um, just, I guess, maybe we have time for a really brief question. Last question is a combined degree. I know, Jessica, you're doing a combined degree. I don't know if anyone else has thought about it. Um, but the question is, how did you manage to keep up with your studying? And before you answer, I'm just going to explain really briefly. A combined degree, um, just so you know, on the program end, you actually come away with two different parchments. You get two different degrees. It takes about five years to complete. And what happens is you take the core courses from your one degree and the core courses from the other, and they slot into each other's options. So rather than it taking eight years to complete two degrees, you can do it in about five. All right. Off you go, Jessica, if you couldn't. If you don't mind answering that question. Yeah, 100%. So the reason why it takes five years is because you're required to take 150 units. Um, so that's, again, like if you take 10, 10 courses every single year, that's like 50 courses. Um, so it is like an extra year. Um, I know that actually that's one of the biggest things that kind of deter people away from combined degrees or even just taking more than four years. I think the kind of average, um, well, the standard for most people in most people's heads is four degree, four years to take a degree now, but it's really popular to take more time now. So if that is like, if you are interested in combined degree and that's one of the deterrences for you, taking five years is totally normal now. And I actually recommend taking five years because like if it gives you a lot of time to like do get the most out of your university experience, I'm actually going to be taking six years for my degree. Um, so that's because I'm doing two degrees, also took a whole year off for co-op. Um, and I'm hoping to go on a few study abroads as well. Um, so don't worry, unless you're like, you have a particular reason to rush for your degree, don't worry about taking too long. Like if I didn't, if I took only four years, I would have graduated at 21. And I definitely feel like I would not be ready to graduate and go into the full-time working world at 21. Um, so that's one thing I wanted to say there. How do I keep up studying? I think it's actually just, it's the same as taking a normal degree to me, um, just like one degree, because you're still taking like, for myself, I'm still taking like 10 courses each um, each year. It's just like an extra um, extra year or so. So um, basically what most people in combined degrees do is that 
normally if you took one degree you do all your concentrations and then you do your options again like rochelle said they kind of what you'd probably do is like one the concentrations for one degree um would kind of apply as options for your other degree so it's you're not really taking like too many extra courses at all Thank you so much for the answers. I know that um, Rochelle is having some technical difficulties, so I'm happy to step in. Um, I'm one of her colleagues at the undergrad office, and we're super excited to be meeting with you and with our students um, in this session. So thank you all. Um, it's two o'clock to the T, so um, being very cognizant of everyone's time, if you would like to log off, um, please feel free to do so. I know that Rochelle and myself can hang around for a few more minutes and ask if you have any other questions, but uh, otherwise, please do connect with us. Um, email us if you, if you have any questions. We'd love to hear from you or answer any inquiries that you might have. And for our student panel, thank you so much for the amazing job you guys did today. We're super happy to be working with you. Um, again, thanks for joining our session. We look forward to having you in our program and school next fall. Um, reach out if you have any questions, and Rochelle and I will hang around for a few more minutes if you have any more questions you could have to answer. But otherwise, thank you all and enjoy the rest of your Saturday and weekend. Oh my gosh, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry about that. It it literally would not let me unmute or chat or do anything. I don't know what happened. I think uh, I think Brienne had a question. Did you want to ask it, Brienne? Brianna? Yes. Oh, the, some of the degrees that you can combine okay. with business almost like a lot of them. There's a few that are tricky um, and they're not listed in the calendar as an official combined degree, but I know that I have let students combine. Um, if they can, essentially, if they can figure out how to do it, then that would be certainly, um, it might take more than five years. The ones that we've listed, we've tested out. We know that there, there's a good combination of options in both degrees so that you can actually complete within a certain amount of time. And our BCom engineering degree is one where we had to do something special because it requires more than 150 credits. So, and yeah, there you go. Thanks, 4.2 in our is our list of combined degrees. You're welcome, Brianna. Looking forward to having you here. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear me. I'm I'm having troubles again. Oh, good. Just thank you so much for being a part. I see Simran Services is still on. Did they, do you have a question for us before we go? I'm having all kinds. I can't see the chat anymore, so I don't know what's happening, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> um, but uh, please get in touch at undergraduate at haskane.ucalgary.ca if you do. Um, but otherwise, to my delightful student volunteers, you were so wonderfully spoken and eloquent and so much fun um, to do this with. So I just wanted to say a special thank you to you. And I'm sorry that 
whatever is going on happened at the end and I bailed out at the end of our thing, but at least we made it most of the way through. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Have a great afternoon, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. See ya. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.